Today we're going to show you how to change over some jets in your Leshy 2. Uh, the reason why you might want to do this, uh, you may have received a gun from Edgun UK and wasn't happy with how they tuned it. Um, a lot of people are asking, how do you take it back to factory spec? Well, this is one of the things that you can do by changing over the two milled drilled out jets that they do and replacing it with other jets or nozzles, whatever you want to call them, that you can purchase from Edgun Spain or Edgun West. So, first thing to do, to attach the part of the gun. And then I'm going to degas it with a two and a half mil Allen key. Make sure you always get the Allen key in nice because if you uh, mess up the head on that, that'll be a nightmare then to get changed over. You don't want to let out the air too quick because uh, it can damage the uh, small O ring in there. So a nice steady pressure. Now once all the air is out, don't forget just to nip that back up for when you re-put the air in later. Now, next thing to do is just screw up this part. There's quite a few threads on there. Once that's out, then gently just take it out. Just bearing in mind there is an O-ring on here. Now, these are the parts here. Let's see if we can get a closer look at that. Now these are the jets or the nozzles as they're called. I actually have some 0.7mm ones in at the moment. Uh, I'm going to put two 1mm um, ones in there, which is uh, one of the combinations that I haven't tried out yet. It is actually a combination that quite a lot of people have used had great results for shot count uh, power consistency and so on so all we're going to do is depending on how tight these have been done you probably can there you go i can actually open both mine so before i do that i'm just going to get ready the two one mil jets that i am going to replace them with Now, behind these, there are actually two little springs. So the best thing to do is to hold it in the upright position. Unscrew them carefully. I'm just gonna take them out there. Now again, they always, well, everyone that I've ever seen, especially from uh, when I've purchased them, they all are always marked on the side. Um, so on there, they say uh, 0.07, and these ones do say uh, one millimeter so as I'm holding it this way up I'm not going to tip it upside down if you were to tip it upside down as you can see the little small um, spring and the other part actually does come out quite easily it is worth mentioning that if the part if they do come out and if you can see it here let's see if we can get that off focused in so if they do come out, you want the the metal end on the left, that goes in first, and the open spring, that's the bit that the jet actually rests against. And then we just simply screw them in. Make sure not to cross thread anything, they go in quite easily. So like I said, we're taking out the 2.7mm jets and replace them with two one mil jets. To my knowledge, Edgun only sell up to 1.2 millimeter, which, which would tell me that they don't really want you to exceed that. So again, I've when I first got the gun, I removed the jets that were in there because they had been uh, butchered, I mean, drilled out to two mil. Right, now they're nice and tight. Finger tight, as tight as you can go. You can use a spanner, you can use tools. Personally, I don't want to overdo it and damage anything so I find as long as they're as tight as they are 
you're good to go. Also, it's worth noting that this whole metal area, this whole metal piece does actually come out, but that's for another video, another day. So we'll make sure that that's nice and tight at the moment. And the jets are as tight as I can get them there. Okay, so next thing to do, like I do with every time when I'm taking anything apart, the O-rings, you want them to last as long as you, uh, as long as you can. So it's always worth just putting a little bit of silicon lubricant on there just to keep them all good, prevent them from cracking. And then just make sure you do wipe off any excess around. Right, so, yeah, that's all tight. Each jet is tight. So we'll now get that back in. Again, when you're first going in, just allow for that little, that's sorry, the larger O-ring. Just push it in gently. Once you feel it's getting in, in the correct position then it will pick up on the thread again make sure you're not cross threading anything that's going in nice and easily so we know we haven't done and this will actually come to a stop once you're at the point where it doesn't want to go around anymore there we go so you can see it's stopped in that position and it is aligned and straight now, because I've adjusted, uh, removed and replaced the, the, the jets or the nozzles, whatever you want to call them, I am going to have to adjust the regulator. Now, the reason being, um, because I had the 0.7mm jets in, um, because I've put in now a larger hull, the regulator will need adjusting. If I fire it now, it will probably um, be well under about 11 foot pound. It was at a constant about 11.6. So what I am going to do at this point is I'm just going to adjust the regulator, we'll then chrono it, see what the power is, and see if it needs adjusting. So now that it's for the regulator adjustment. So that's all still in, in place as it was. So now you actually want to screw this main part off. Again, we've got that out there's another o-ring in place so this is the regulator adjustment so what we need to do first we need to get a four mil allen key now this is a reverse thread so whereas normally you know clockwise would do it up anti-clockwise would undo it this is a reverse thread so it's the other way around so what I do because this, this thread can be damaged quite easily so what I do, we want to undo it, so we've got to go clockwise. Just make sure you get it in there. Once it starts to spin, what I do, just to make sure there's no accidents and nothing's going to get cross-threaded at all, what I do is I then, once I can get it, as soon as there's enough exposed, I then take it out with my fingers just to make sure that I'm not going to cross-thread and damage it. So this basically, this is a cap just to protect the uh, actual regulator adjustment from being adjusted um, and, and it's to protect it so it doesn't move. Again, some people that received their guns were missing this and was told it wasn't really needed. Absolute nonsense, of course it's needed. This is needed to lock everything in place. So the next thing, we then, uh, we need a three mil Allen key. Now, what you've got to remember with the regulator adjustment is uh, clockwise if you turn it clockwise that will decrease the power because like i said it's a reverse thread so clockwork clockwise will decrease it anti-clockwise will increase it so on this uh, situation we do want to just increase it a very very slight bit as long as it's chrono in as long as it's within the legal power limit i'm happy with that um, i'm guessing at the moment my reg pressure is at about between 65 and 70 bar uh, from various uh, from depth measurements and from other findings that I've found online. Um, so that's roughly where I am. But so what I want to do now, I'm going to increase it. So I need to go anti-clockwise. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to put the Allen key in here. And I'm going to just go anti-clockwise a quarter of a turn. So that has now increased the power. I'm then going to put the locking cap back on again because i'm doing it up it's a reverse thread i've got to do it anti-clockwise 
and then once that goes in any further where I can't get it I then just go in with an allen key again this is more to protect the, uh, the thread that can get damaged now you don't go crazy tight it's just literally just nip it up and we're good to go right so we'll now put some more put some more silicon lubricant on this just to keep that o-ring good Again, just wipe off any excess. Whenever I'm doing this as well, I just I do always have a quick look at the O-ring just to check there's no cracks or anything in there. That all looks good, right? So we then just put this in again, the same with before. We just let that O-ring get in there. Once you know it's gone in without too much pressure forcing anything, we then just make sure that the the thread is lined up and then that should go in nicely again you can't really over tighten it it will stop once it gets to its end position which is there we'll just give mine a quick wipe because of that silicon stuff gets everywhere so that's all done so we know we've already tightened up the the bleed screw i'm now just going to get some air in this and then we'll get it on the gun and we'll chrono it to see where we are. So I put some air back in it. Uh, I've only got a seven litre bottle here. So I've uh, filled it up to um, about 200 and, I don't know, about two, between 230 and 240 bar. I don't know if you can see that, if it's focusing or not. So when I reattach that to the gun, Now what I what I have been doing, um, sometimes when I, I re, re put air in, I always find the first shot can be a little bit spiky or a little bit more powerful because it's the first shot after you've just uh, re, re aired it or re gassed it. So what I tend to do is I do just, I do just fire it a couple of times just to, uh, just to get that initial spike shot out the way. Right, so I've attached my chrono, the FX chrono, which I normally find to be very accurate. We've changed the nozzles, we've changed the reg pressure. Let's, uh, let's see how close we are. 11.8, that's, uh, that's not a bad start. 11.4. So quite consistent there. Um, now I have heard that for the best consistency, you are told to wait about 15 seconds between each shot, whether or not that's right or not. I'm not sure because the person told me has proved not to be very uh, knowledgeable when it comes down to the Leshy 2. Um, you saw the space in between shots. The first shot, yes, it was 11.8, but then we had 11.4. 11.3, 11 11.4, 11 11.5, 11 11.5, 11 11.3, 11 11.5. So the power consistency isn't bad. Um, I am going to leave it at that. Um, we are using the Hades 15.89 um, grain pellets. So it's not the lightest of pellets, it's not the heaviest, but it's a, it's a good medium ground to, to work off. Um, so that is it. That's the end of uh, the video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and uh, we'll see you soon.